It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Hi everyone, I'm Sam LaSant. Thanks for joining us. We are talking to the new police chief in Hazleton, Pennsylvania. Uh, Frank DeAndre has been in law enforcement for 25 years. He is now the new chief uh, of police in Hazleton. Frank, thanks for coming on the Sam LaSant Show. Thank you very much. Now, I want to congratulate you on Thank becoming you. the chief, I, and uh, I'm sure th there's a, a lot of challenges ahead for you, Frank. Yes. Um, I know you many, many years, but I'm sure there's a lot of people, and uh, we have a whole new viewership uh, in the Schuylkill County area that does not know Frank DeAndre. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I think the important things, you know, right out are I'm born and raised in the city of uh, Hazleton. Family, my family before me was from the city of Hazleton. I uh, raised six children here. My kids go to school here. I went to school here. Um, went into the uh, military after the military. Went to the Pennsylvania State Police, where 11 months ago I retired from the Pennsylvania State Police as a sergeant. Uh, fortunate uh, to have spent a great year in a uh, great career in law enforcement. About 20 of my 23 years in the state police was out of Luzerne County. Um, so I've worked very closely with many of the Luzerne County police departments, uh, the state, federal, local, um, in the Luzerne, Schuylkill, Carbon, Columbia, Monroe area. So this is home for me. What, what was the, the uh, knowing your, your background, but what was the, the re reason that you w wanted to look at becoming, you know, a police chief um, in, in, in Hazleton? Sure. That's a great question. Um, you know, as a kid, somewhere probably around when you're six or seven, you pick something that you love and that you want to do. Um, Mayan, through my grandfather, who was very, very uh, tied in politics and knows magistrates, and so I was always around the city police as a little kid. I, I looked up to them, and it got to the point where I wanted to be a cop. I knew I wanted to be a cop. I didn't know what kind of cop. I didn't even know that. But as a kid, I wanted to be a cop. And it was Hazleton City that I wanted to emulate. Um, it, I, I remember it being seven years old and my grandfather taking me down the basement of City Hall into the holding cells. Um, I'm not sure if I was actually being threatened at the time, but I just remember that, you know. And so it was funny that today I brought my children downstairs and was showing them the same cells that, you know, I had seen. But that was what, what started me on having always looked up to the city of Hazleton's police department. And then, as I'm working in the state police, I'm working hand in hand many times. I was the forensics expert for Troop N. Hazleton for six years and so many of the major cases during that time period that the city had, I was here processing the crime scenes. Um, you know, so I, I work hand in hand with them, and a lot of times I was actually envious of the city and, and what they had and what they were able to do. Uh, in any agency, some restrictions, whether you're federal, state, or local, um, sometimes your hands are tied where some other agencies aren't. And so I always looked up to the city of Hazleton. Then it gets to the point where I retire from the state police and Mayor Yanuzzi had contacted me. And the way that that happened was I see the mayor every once in a while at lunch. I read the paper, Chief Ferdinand, good friend of mine, um, actually I, I call him Bobby, forgive me, um, we grew up in law enforcement together. He became a patrolman in the city of Hazleton when I went to the state police academy. So many times, we're in each other's speed dial, there have been many times where we have um, corresponded, spoke, and uh, I see in the newspaper, Chief Ferdinand's retiring. So I see the mayor and I said, I have served on the selection committee for the state police many times. If you need any help in setting up a selection criteria, I'm happy to come down and give you some pointers, set it up with you, for you, help in any way. About a week later, the mayor, a week later, the mayor called me and said, I'll take you up on that. I go down to City Hall, the next day I had worked in put some criteria together, pulled some old stuff out of when I had done it for the state police for several different positions. And the mayor said to me, he said, I have to ask you something. I'd like to know if you would consider being the chief of police. It caught me off guard. I never would have in a million years expected to be offered such a once in a lifetime position. And so I've learned probably since my military days, you don't volunteer 
And it's easier to say no right out of the chute than it is to say yes and try to get yourself out of something later. So I respectfully said, you know, no, thank you. I'm happy to help in any way I can. But I, I, at this point, I, I don't want to be chief. I really never thought about it. I go home. I tell my wife. And my wife said, I don't know why you didn't say yes. You'd be a great chief. Look at all of the different things you've done in your career and your history and who you know and what you know about the city. But part of the reason why I initially said no was you, don't, you just don't walk home and say, honey, guess what, you know, and, and not talk about a life-changing yeah. career decision. <laughs> Surprise, we're moving to California, whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, and God bless her, but she was actually the person who was saying, well, think about, you know, this. At that point, I said, I stand by my word. It's too late now because the mayor has given me, once I gave him the criteria, and he thought, oh, those are good criteria, he gave me the list of applications and said, please go through them and, and put them where they fit through the selection criteria and get back to me. We'll go to the next step. But now that I am the selection committee, I don't think that it's fair to go back and say, hey, I changed my mind. I've looked at all these resumes. So I worked with the mayor on a selection committee. He um, called the top six candidates after, after he went through them. The, uh, one of the candidates really, in an oral interview, was head and shoulders above who he felt all the rest of their answers. He calls him in for a personal interview, and, and the person just was, would have been a phenomenal chief for the city. There's no doubt in my mind the criteria that the mayor had allowed to be set would have brought a great chief in. As, uh, as luck for me would have it, that um, because you have to understand also, I'm now kicking myself for not saying yes. yes and yes. as I'm thinking about it, and as I'm building all, structuring all the questions of how will you do this and what would you like to do there, I'm thinking, I can't believe I said no. But again, being a man of my word, I'm not going back on, and I'm also not going against saying I'd be happy to help. It ends up that the mayor uh, talks to me, calls me on a Saturday and said, you know, I need to meet with you, can we meet tomorrow? I'm thinking city council meets Thursday night. The new chief who already has accepted the position is coming in. He needs the, um, what I call it, the transition team that I told him I'd happily serve on to show him around the area, introduce him to some law enforcement. Well, sa Sunday, the mayor explains to me that for personal reasons, the chief to be who he offered the position to had to back out. And at this time, I was ready. Because yeah. the mayor said, Frank, you know, I, again, I'm going to ask you, Will you be the chief? Uh, I, he knew my background. He, he sure. just followed my career. And this time, I, I was smart enough to have already talked to my wife. And so, you know, the rest is so history. So the boss says it was okay. Yeah, exactly. I yeah. had the okay. Mm -hmm. I actually, and I joke saying it, I, the okay, but it's important for me to have my wife's blessing. Absolutely, yeah. and I respect you for yeah. that. Frank, uh, you know, the, uh, many things have happened in 20-some years since you right. were in law enforcement. Uh, and um, Hazelton, uh, you know, uh, f first of all, uh, without question, I applaud anybody in law enforcement today. You know, you. I, 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 I mean that sincerely. Uh, I respect uh, the, the Pennsylvania State Police, the city police, anyone who is in law enforcement, you name it, uh, constables from what, because there's so many different wackos out there today. They're putting themselves at arm's way every day. It's not like it was many years ago, so I applaud them. I wouldn't want to be a state cop. I wouldn't want to be a, anyone You're right. because it's, it really, so it takes a certain character. With that being said, uh, I think the public needs to give our law enforcement support, okay? Uh, they have enough going against them as far as the laws and regulations, right. and they need support from the, uh, from the public. Now, Talking about Hazelton, okay, and uh, I applaud uh, Mayor Yunuzi because he's, you know, he's moving. Whether, you know, the election's over, with, now we have to move forward. Um, we, what I want to come back, I'd like to know what your vision is, all right? Um, you know, how do you intend to work with your, the patrolmen and the right. detectives? Sure. Uh, working with law enforcement and having that experience. Folks, I'm talking to Frank DeAndrea. He is the new uh, chief of police in Hazelton, and it affects everyone in the 20-mile, 25-mile radius because he has to deal with a lot of people. And uh, certainly we're going to talk about crime and what his thoughts are. And let me tell you something, folks. He may look timid, but you don't want to get him mad. We'll be back right after this.
Welcome back to the San Lasan Show, folks. And once again, I want to welcome all our new viewer, viewers in Schuylkill County. Thanks for being so kind to us. Remember, ssptv.com, 24-7. You can watch any of our shows. My email, sam at ssptv.com. Folks, I'm speaking to Frank D'Andrea. He was appointed the uh, new chief of police in Hazleton. And uh, he's been in law enforcement for 25 years. Knows a little bit about the law. Okay, so you come into position right now uh, as a chief of police and... You know, certainly in Hazleton, uh, we uh, we see a lot of things. You know, people are frustrated. Some people are mad, etc. Well, first of all, what do you intend to do? What's your first initial steps here? Great question. Thank you, um, because I love to be afforded the opportunity to explain my views. So thank you for asking that. Most importantly, before I could ever be a good cop, as the chief of the department, I need to be a phenomenal listener because I'm not gonna know what needs fixed or what doesn't need touched until I talk to everybody I can. That means every man and woman that works in the Hazleton City Police Department, business owners, people from the community, the media, outside law enforcement agencies, the school district. I have to figure out what are, this, what are the city police doing that you really like? And where do you think the city police could better themselves? And then I have to take those answers from the community because public opinion is sometimes different than what we're actually doing. But public opinion is so important that I need to take where they feel we're doing things wrong. And I then need to run back inside of my house here in the city police and say, okay, everybody, this is how we're viewed. How could we correct these things? Or why are we being viewed like this? Um, so right out of the chute, although you, know, you always have some ideas of what you'd like to do, I know the first thing I have to do is go do some fact finding and information gathering. Now, when you're doing that, okay, okay. You, you live here, so you know what's going on, okay? Um, advisory committees, advisory boards, uh, different parts of the community, you know, because you're going to have different concerns in Diamond Avenue than you'll have up in the Heights or you'll have in Alder Street. You know, each one has different concerns. Um, do you have any, um, you know, we, we talk about crime. Now, crime is crime, and I'm not saying that it's, this is a good thing, but thankfully, when you look at crime here, versus our other city codes of similar to Hazleton, we are lower in, in the crime rate, okay? Now, I'm not saying it's not good. Understood. Some people, still, we still have more crime than we ever had, but right. in terms of across the, the country, unfortunately, that's the way it is. Um, you said public opinion is important because you're gonna hear, you know what you should be doing, Frank? Right. You should be, you, know, we should, you should have this, and, and do you know that they're selling drugs up on X Street, and you right. know, et cetera. And, you know, so you have all of this thing. How, how are you going to be able to get this information and then let the public know that they feel safe, particularly coming downtown, okay? Right. The perception is sure. don't come don't. downtown, yeah, which right. is, I mean, we're here. How do you intend to do that? I, I'm sure that my final solution will be multifaceted. Again, it'll be embracing the community. It will be embracing businesses themselves, law enforcement agencies. I need to see where my assets can come from. Um, I'm not sure what federal, state, local agencies in law enforcement could even offer to augment my force. Um, with that, you know, I, again, until I could figure out exactly where the crime hotspots are, what's causing it, shifts, times, you know, uh, there's a lot that will come into play with how to police it. But at the end of the day, it needs to be, you know, I need to identify, well, which one of these is our priority and how do we handle it? But again, that all comes back to the public input and where I could get people's views on um, not only, like I said, what we do right, because some people would never want certain things changed. I'm more concerned with, you know, what you think we should be doing better. Before I ask you what we can do, okay, it's the public in, in Hazleton or for, for, for any law enforcement, um, everybody has a strong forte, okay? Before I went to break, I said, you know, when you meet Frank D'Andrea, he's a nice guy, he seems meek, you know, etc. And you are, you have that persona. 
But something tells me that when it comes to your business and it comes to law enforcement, they ain't going to be pulling any games or anything. You know, you, right. you are there when you have to be there. And I've heard stories about how, you know, you've conducted yourself with people who are criminals and you don't want to mess with Frank DeAndrea. And I think that's a good thing, okay? You know when to be a gentleman when you have to be a gentleman. You know right. to be a policeman when you have to be a policeman. Um, what, would, what, would, you know, what would be your strongest forte, you know? Yeah. I'm, I'm blessed to have worked not only with the U.S. military, but my career in the Pennsylvania State Police was such a joy ride that you would think that someone will write a book about just some of the firsts that I was involved in. I, I, I covered so many different aspects in the State Police that you would never think you're exposed to. I was in a patrol section, and I'll tell you what, when you come out of the academy and you are given the Pennsylvania State Police patch and you get to go to Philadelphia because your, your veins are just filled and, and you want to go where the action is, Philly is an exciting place to be as a state trooper fresh out of the academy. Um, but then I'm able to come back to Troop N. Hazleton. I've done truck driver exams. I've done mix-up inspections. I was, the, I was the driver's license examiner. I was the forensics expert. I, I'm actually the only person that I'm aware of, to at least till I retired, in the history of the state police that was a certified coroner because I went to the coroner classes and took the courses. Um, and that's just a, wanting to better myself. I processed the case. It was a serial rape case out of Bloomsburg, um, 1994, actually seven rapes where DNA, I collected the DNA evidence that is the standard that now Pennsylvania can testify to DNA evidence based on that investigation. That was my investigation as the forensics expert. I designed the computer system for the state police patrol cars. The screen that the patrol cars use that's manufactured by Motorola, I, designed, I made it in my garage with clay and plaster of Paris. Um, I ran that, it was a $22 million computer project, I was in charge of it. I then get to go to, the state police starts gaming enforcement, and I get selected to be the first sergeant in the history of the state police to open a gaming, a, a barracks in a, a casino. I'm also the first person in the state police to ever be certified as a blackjack dealer. You know, I, I went to training, and the reason why I went to training is because Eventually, I, was, I knew I was going to be arresting somebody, and the defense attorney, rightfully so, would say, well, how do you know the rules of the game? Well, I'm a certified expert. So, you know, <laughs> bringing that yeah. with us, yeah. what happens is um, I, I've had such a career. I've been an administrator. I've been a supervisor. I've run a, a station. I've been in patrol, in crime, in staff. And then growing up with this law enforcement community, my forte is double-edged, where I believe that I have ex been exposed to so many things statewide, as well as I know so many other agencies in law enforcement that I might not know everything, but I know that I where to go to find out the answer. You know, in calling other law enforcement agencies to assist us in any way. So I think that. One of the greatest things that I could bring to the table, um, which was evident today at my swearing-in ceremony, is the breadth of the law enforcement community that supports me because we will be working together. Well, Frank, uh, I, I think it's, it's a challenge. Now, uh, I asked you a question before, is, is what can the public do, not only in Hazleton, okay, to help law enforcement, uh, to, to make your jobs better, and then, of course, uh, I'm sure there's internal things that you have to, you know, uh, straighten out. Folks, I'm talking to Frank DeAndrea. He is the new uh, police chief in Hazleton. However, uh, Hazleton uh, has every community, uh, no matter what police department, it affects all of us uh, in living in this geographic area. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the Sam LaSanne Show, folks. 24-7 SSPTV.com. Folks, um, thank you so much for hitting our website. We're over... It's over a million right now. It's, an, it's amazing how many people are hitting our website. I'm speaking to Frank DeAndrea, uh, been in law enforcement for 25 years. He is new chief of police in Hazleton. Uh, Frank, in Hazleton, uh, as we were just discussing, there's been a tremendous increase in the Hispanic population. You mentioned numbers such as what, 4% to what? Yeah, in 2000, the U.S. Census said there was 4% Hispanics. 
In 2010, it's 47% Hispanics. And the population of the city of Hazleton increased by 2,000 people. So it's not as if the population went down. So currently, the population of the city of Hazleton is basically half Latino. Mm -hmm. Now, we all want to work together. You know, the Italians came in, the Irish came in, the Polish came in, and we have a lot of people coming into the area, and we have to work together. What's your, um, what's your, your vision there? I think that if I cannot figure out how to embrace the entire city of Hazleton, I can only do half my job in law enforcement. Right now, it doesn't matter what percentage of the community we are, we being any faction of the community, I serve the community. And I am sworn to serve and protect not only 50% that, don't, uh, that speak English or 47% of this or 3% of that, I'm, ser I'm sworn to serve and protect the entire community. So what I need to do is I need to figure out how to embrace the entire community um, by contacting business owners and contacting concerned citizens and getting views to figure out how to make Hazleton one. All right, now my question to you is, how can we in the community, uh, whether we're business people, whether we're professionals, whether we're citizens or whomever, how can we help law enforcement? There's several <clears throat> ways. And, and again, you ask all the good questions. So that's, thank that's, you. That's, that's, that's your job, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The fact is that there are, there are many things right out of the bat that people in a community can do. Um, first of all, you see something right. It's always nice to let somebody know because that's what I'm looking for. As much as I'm looking for what the police are doing wrong, if you see something that you like that the police officer did, does, I would like to know that too so that that's one of the things I'm not trying to change. Second of all, it, it's all we, we have tip lines at uh, Hazleton City Hall. You contact 911. We switched Luzerne County, went to the 911 system. So if you see a crime being committed, call 911. Let us know so that we could respond. A lot of times, a community doesn't call, and then they get frustrated that nothing happens to fix a problem, and half of the time, the police aren't even aware of the problem. So, go ahead. No, I'm sorry, finish your, your thought. Calling <coughs> when you see something that's going on that's wrong is always huge. Okay, now I'm gonna, I, I have a two minutes left. When people, this is a, a question, and, and I want people to understand this, and Bob Ferdinand said this many times. So people see drug activity and they make the phone call. Then what you hear is, they don't do anything about it, okay? There's a process that has to go on, just right. so they know that there is something being, but maybe, what happens? When someone <coughs> calls and reports any type of covert or, or criminal activity, such as drugs, that what has to happen is, you've gotta be able to do an investigation to look into it. You can't just show up on the street corner and say, okay, there they are, come on with me. First of all, you need probable cause. So sometimes it's just first trying to identify who was there and then following them and set up an investigation so that at the end of it, and you take them to court, they're going to jail. So let me ask you this. If I see, in, uh, some, uh, which I think is drug activity, the more information I could provide, in other words, if I could get a license plate, or if I get a description of the people, the kind, the car, or whatever, that's a tremendous help to you guys? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We, we really can't function much without it. Well, Frank, um, I, I know uh, as uh, Bob Ferdinand used to do, we, we'd come on the show every once in a while just to fill us in on what's going on. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, you certainly have our support and uh, you know our media partnerships. I'm sure the Standard Speaker uh, and SSP TV and our news will be more than happy to do whatever we can. Uh, we're proud owners here of this building now. We're property owners. We, yeah, we own the building, so we're very much involved in the city of Hazleton. We made a major investment the LaSanne family has. Uh, I know you for many years. You're a great guy, Frank. You. you really are. And all I know is just don't get you mad because you're going to do your job well. And I wish you the best. Thank you very much. And as I also want to wish uh, Chief Ferdinand the best in his retirement. He did a great job, folks. Remember, they need your help. Uh, so whatever you can do to help the law enforcement, please do. You're watching the Sam Sancho. We'll see you next time.